It is Space Vidcast 4.04 for Friday, February 18th, 2011. My name is Benjamin Higginbotham. With me, as always, is beautiful, lovely, wonderful, and talented Carrie and Higginbotham. And oh my gosh, we have got some guests on tonight's show. What, what, what? I know, exactly. Joining us as one of our regulars, I think he is now beating out Tim Bailey yet again, hmm. is William Pomerantz from the XPRIZE Foundation, but he's not alone this time. <gasps> Nay. Does this he have the white chair? He does not have the white chair either. This time he is joined by Amanda Stiles. Both work in the space division of the X Prize Foundation. Hey guys, welcome very, welcome very much welcome to the show. Welcome very much. Hmm. And you're muted. Hold. There we go. No, I was just fake talking, <laughs> just to make things more interested. Awesome. Well, you. <laughs> One of those. Hey, so um, before we get into what you guys just announced earlier today, for those who maybe are new viewers or new space geeks or maybe don't know of the XPRIZE Foundation, give us a little background. What is the XPRIZE Foundation? Sure. We are a nonprofit organization. We're based in Los Angeles, California. And what we do is we give away very large cash prizes to people who can solve major technological problems in a way that we feel will benefit all humanity. Uh, we got the... our start in the space industry. If you've heard of us before, you probably first heard of us through the Ansari X Prize, which was a $10 million competition for the first privately funded team to send a person into space on a suborbital flight uh, and to do that two times within two weeks. We offered that prize up in the mid-90s and awarded it in 2004 to Spaceship One, that wonderful vehicle that now hangs in the Smithsonian. Uh, we've gone on to do other prizes. We've expanded to other sectors. Last year, we handed out $10 million for fuel-efficient cars as part of the Progressive Insurance Automotive X Prize. But space is still really where it's at. Um, it's the most fun prize to work on, I think. Uh, and right now, we've got a, a $30 million prize going on right now, the Google Lunar X Prize. So tell us a little bit about the Google Lunar X Prize. Obviously, that involves the Goog in one way or another. Are they? The, that's, that's, that's how they're known. That, that's the street, that's street term them. for them, the Goog. Uh, yeah, so what's going on with that guy? Sure, so that is, uh, at $30 million, the largest international incentive prize ever offered. We are challenging teams uh, from all around the world to put a robot on the moon and explore the lunar surface, move around for at least a third of a mile, half a kilometer, and send back HD video. It will probably be the first time anything's been on the lunar surface since the final Soviet mission in 1976. And we're really looking forward to kind of recapturing all that enthusiasm that happened in the first era of space, uh, of lunar exploration. But this time doing it with these small, privately led teams that will probably have team members coming in from all over the world. So with the Ansari X Prize, out of that was born uh, uh, Virgin Galactic, essentially, with Spaceship Two and White Knight Two, is just a larger version of Spaceship. I, I, I'm sure that the engineers that work at Scaled Composites are. It's not the same thing. It's different. It's bigger. But r really, that's what was born out of Ansari X Prize. What do you think will be born out of the Google Lunar X Prize? You're, you're exactly right. We work with all of our prizes. We hope that we're just the start of an ongoing technological revolution. We're, we're not an end. We're, a, we're a means to an end. Um, in, in that, in Sorry X Prize, just like you mentioned, you know, that's now a billion dollar business flying people into suborbital space and flying scientific payloads, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, with this one, with the Google Lunar X Prize, we think there's a huge amount of business to be done. You know, there's a third party uh, an, uh, analysis done by the Futron Corporation that says it's somewhere between a one and a one and a half billion dollar market over the next decade uh, flying a variety of payloads, doing a lot of it for the big space agencies, for NASA. Also for smaller space agencies um, and for private businesses, for university labs, for individuals. Uh, I think the moon, just like all of space, is a totally fantastic research environment that we've only just begun to tap. Uh, and right now it's one that's so expensive that not many people can, uh, can play in that space. It's essentially a monopsony, to use the economic term. Um, we think that our teams are going to get the price point down so much lower that it does get to the point where you know, an individual university lab can say, hey, we really want to fly this payload. It's what's going to give uh, our graduate students the data for their theses. It's what's going to allow us to patent some new material or make some major discovery. And now we don't need to wait and hope that we get selected for the, you know, the one lunar mission every couple of decades that's done by our space agency. We're just going to buy a ride ourselves. You guys made an announcement earlier today. I was wondering if uh, maybe we could give Amanda a term to talk, time to talk. <laughs> no. You never give me any time to talk. What's the difference? Uh, you know, I'm just evil like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what is it that you guys announced earlier today? Uh, well, so at 3 a.m. to be exact, we put out our press release that uh, we have eight new teams 
and that brings us to a total of 29 fully registered teams. Um, this is our final roster, and they are headquartered in 17 different countries around the world. That was our big news of the day. I, I got to say, like, they did a fantastic job. We had all those teams come in from all different language backgrounds. Uh, not necessarily easy to launch them all simultaneously. So thanks to Amanda, but we are super excited. I mean, what a huge number of teams we were. Uh, we were hopeful when we started this thing that we might get a dozen. And to end up at 30 is going to keep us really busy, uh, but really happy. How, how does that compare to other other competitions like the Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander Challenge, for example? Mm. Uh, well, we beat the Ansari X Prize. The Ansari X Prize had 26. The Northrop Grumman Lunar Lander X Challenge over the years had um, either a dozen or a baker's dozen. I can't recall. Uh, but so we're well ahead of that. Nice. And and we are also by far the most international competition that the X Prize Foundation has ever done. We still can't compare to the Automotive X Prize, which had something like 111 teams. Mm -hmm. um, but we actually have many more countries. As as Amanda, Amanda mentioned, we have teams headquartered in uh, 17. Yeah, 17 yeah. countries, but most of those are multinational teams. So we actually have team members working in almost 70 countries. Pretty much regardless of where your space vidcast audience is, we've got a, a hometown team or at least a team member for you. Ooh, it's, it's almost like we could have like a foot a GLXP game going on, kind of like football, but root for your home team. Like it, right? Get like flags and symbols and, you know, go, you know, next giant leap or whomever. Right, yeah. right. That'd that would be, be awesome. That Please do be that. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, we should get a little sto scoreboard and grid going up there. Um, if I wanted to start a team now, would I be able to do that? Or has there been a cutoff at this point saying, this is the end, this is how many teams we have? Uh, this is it. Uh, the, the deadline was December 31st, 2010, at midnight. And um, amazingly enough, we actually had teams registering on that day. But um, we are done. We are, we are at 29. and. Those are the teams that are racing to the moon now. Uh, I will say you could join one of our current teams, and I know almost all of them are still hiring or looking for volunteers. I saw uh, someone in the chat room mentioning we have open source teams. Uh, we do indeed, so it's not too late for you or your viewers to get involved. You just can't register your own team. So where are the teams at technologically in, in the, the race to the moon, essentially? Are, they, are there any teams that are ready to launch today? Or are we still a few years out from actually being able to see any of the teams put something on the surface of the moon? There's a pretty big range. You know, we have teams that obviously just joined, and, and a few of those teams had already been working on it kind of in private for a while, but a number of them are also just getting started. So we do have teams kind of starting from, from, the, from the ground level right now. We have other teams who have been involved in the competition since 2007, some of whom were building on past work that they've done and are very far along. Um, we just had a, a big milestone happened actually on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, where we had our first team announce uh, that they had signed a launch contract. That's a huge milestone for them and for us. Um, those of you who have never tried to purchase a ride on a rocket before, which probably is most of us statistically speaking, uh, might not realize that in addition to being really expensive, uh, rockets are, are also hard to book. There's uh, not a whole lot of them and there are a fair number of uh, customers. So just getting your spot in line requires paying a fairly sizable down payment uh, and being willing to wait for quite some time. Uh, but we are seeing some some fantastically impressive progress. I know Amanda every year puts together a, a hardware reel and starting work on that pretty soon for, for this year, you'll be able to, to get a, a taste uh, for uh, all the cool hardware things our teams have going on. So how many of the teams are actually going to try to launch themselves versus uh, outsourcing the launch to someone like SpaceX? Because they don't have to actually launch the vehicle, they just have to put the vehicle on the moon. Right, They're not responsible for launch itself, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, you can build it or buy it, whichever you prefer. I'd say maybe a third of our teams, a quarter to a third of our teams are looking to build their own launch vehicle. The vast majority of them are, are looking to uh, to buy a ride. We do have a, a, a sort of a sweetheart deal with SpaceX where they have essentially waived, uh, waived their profit on any launch for a team that is uh, pursuing the Google Lunar X Prize. So that's nice. That's a, you know, a, a multi-million dollar coupon, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, so a number of our teams are looking that way. But we have teams looking at other uh, rockets built here in the United States and built uh, in a variety of countries abroad. It's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I mean, this is, this is the 
next time humans are going back to the moon and it's not a government doing it. It's these it's this competition that's spurring people to try to put rovers back on the moon. Would you say that? Exactly. And I think that the robotic things that our teams are doing are going to play a huge role in the human missions of the future, whether those be government led, presumably, and eventually, hopefully, uh, commercially led. But these these little teams doing these wonderful things, uh, I think, are really they're not necessarily competitive with NASA and other space agencies. They're really complementary to that. And they're they're designing different types of capacity at a radically different price point that NASA or European Space Agency or any of the others can use to, to slot into their own uh, skill sets. And not just rovers either, but um, hoppers and things that roll around on the ground and dig through and all kinds of different ideas that are very innovative. Ah, this, this is why I have her on the show. She catches me on the good things like that. Totally important. It's not just traditional rovers. We do have things that look very different that are moving around in very different ways. Uh, and we love to see that kind of diversity because we think that there's values to all those different ideas. Now, Jim brought up in the chat room, isn't SpaceX really the only game in, in town capable of or, you know, able to lift these vehicles into space? I, is there anyone else that would be willing to do what they're doing? Oh, yeah, I think there are a lot of people that would be willing. Um, SpaceX is probably the most attractive one from a price point, and that's why we formed this preferred partnership with them. But there are a number of different uh, teams, or excuse me, uh, companies that would happily sell you a ride. Uh, and, you know, we have to look obviously at the the deltas and the atlas families here in the united states could certainly do the job abroad you have things like Ariane, which could do the job many times over uh, but you also have to look at the, some of the ukrainian and russian rockets um the indian rockets pslv and gslv uh hopefully they can sort of break their recent string of bad luck because those are, are wonderful candidate rockets uh we have a team from china and and obviously they are looking at long march rockets uh so there are a number of different ways that you could go well, I got to say, I'm excited. I, I'm looking forward to the day when we get that live HD video back from the moon because uh, that's we've not had that before, right? The no, the best we've had was crazy. the JAXA craft that went around, and we got those H, that HD imagery back, which was stunning. But we haven't had anything from the surface of the moon in HD, as far as I know, ever. And uh, that's something that they're going to have to do uh, to win the prize. They have to have those cameras on board. Uh, but there are other sub-prizes. Before we let you go, there are other sub-prizes. Can you talk about some of those uh, sub-missions that they need to do? Sure. So unlike our original X Prize, this one is not a winner take all. We have uh, a grand prize of $20 million and a second place prize, you know, second team to do exactly the same job, which is worth $5 million. Uh, we've got a $1 million award for the team that does the most to stimulate diversity in the fields, in, basically in all of the STEM fields, and especially space exploration, bringing new kinds of people and new kinds of ideas into the field. Uh, and then we have a variety of technical bonuses for things like moving 10 times as far, uh, for getting some surface confirmation of the recent and absolutely, uh, you know, it's super exciting findings of, uh, of water in the form of ice uh, all across the moon's surface, uh, and for revisiting the sites of, uh, of previous missions. Oh, and surviving the lunar night is the one I forgot. You know, and actually, BZ Wing uh, does correct me. Technically speaking, the film taken on the moon is higher resolution than HD, but I would argue that the quality of the film is below what we'll be able to get on these new uh, rovers that are going up to the moon. Hey, uh, William and Amanda, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, where can people get more information on the Google Lunar X Prize? I, I need to articulate that more, the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, GoogleLunarXPrize.org or GoogleLunarXPrize.org. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're on Twitter at GLXP, Facebook, Google Lunar X Prize, um, and then we have a blog, the launchpad.xprize.org, and you can find everything else from there, and a YouTube channel, I should say, too. And, and one last thing, a request for your viewers, if I may. We are really trying to spread the word about this. What these teams are doing is absolutely heroic and inspiring. It is great to uh, get students really excited about studying science, math, technology, uh, and also people paying attention online really helps the teams win. It helps them get sponsors, it helps them get customers and investors. So you are doing all of us a big favor if you help spread the word about this, uh, if you wanna retweet things or post them on link aggregators. The more people you tell about the Google Lunar X Prize, the sooner it is that some team is gonna end up on the lunar surface. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is Moon 2.0. This is the future. This is where we're going. And if we wanna get out of low Earth orbit, these are the first steps to make that happen. Absolutely, amen. All right. Hey, guys, thank you so much. Uh, don't go too far. We've got the post show. Uh, but before we go into post show, let's take a quick break. And when we come back, some space news. We'll see you guys in just a few. Awkward pause. <laughs> <laughs> You're on mute.
Happy Yuri's Night, 2011. You know, Yuri Gagarin circled the Earth above the atmosphere, had to jump out of his capsule on the way down in 1961. So it was 50 years ago. On that, you know, April 12th, uh, that day, you know, humanity changed. We became a species that was no longer confined to, to the Earth. What people used to dream about came true. The reality is in those 50 years, human beings have fulfilled a ambition that's existed in the human spirit for thousands of years before. Space exploration brings out the best in us, brings out the best in humans. I think that that orbital perspective that you get when you look down at this you know, planet hanging in the blackness of space is something that can't help but to affect you in some way. But I think that the, the concept of planet Earth is coming from humans' perspective. Our future is global. I think back about you know that Christmas Eve where we for the first time, we saw an Earth rise on the, on the lunar horizon. You know, I, I think the way we looked at our planet, the way we looked at ourselves, changed forever. We're all in this together. We're all riding through this spaceship, uh, through, the, through the universe that we call planet Earth. And it's something that we need to take care of, and we need to take care of each other. But it really put a focus on who we are as a species, who, you know, who we are as inhabitants of, of planet Earth. Fifty years ago, they knew not only the dream, but how hard it was going to be to accomplish the dream. Uh, Yuri Gagarin went to space not being positive that he would be able to return alive. Uh, most of the people who followed him in the early days had the same understanding, that there was no guarantee. Just think what the next 50 years are going to be. It's going to be, if I may, unrecognizable in, in a cool way. Well, I think that the transition that will mark the next 50 years is that we will go from placing representatives of our species in orbit to placing human society in orbit. This is going to be the challenge for the next 50 years, not just the technology of moving people and their machines to great distances, but finding out how human beings will interrelate with each other in an environment where they are definitely dependent on each other uh, and in a a uh, set of circumstances totally different from the ones in which we evolved as a species. I hope that that includes, you know, establishing uh, outposts in different parts of the solar system, maybe starting with the moon, we have asteroids, Mars, uh, and, and someday, you know, going beyond our solar system with human exploration. We need the dream, we need to work hard, we need to plan, and we need the dare. If the opportunity comes up, I'll, I'm going. You know, Space Vidcast is all about getting people excited about space again. That's part of the reason why we started this. And the Google Lunar X Prize, that's one way you can do that. Yuri's Night is another great way to do that. Sure. It's a global party. You don't have to be a space geek to like a party, right? Go out, do have some dancing, have some fun, a little bit of alcohol, and celebrate humans being in space for 50 years. And for those people who maybe were interested in space as a child, they looked up at the stars with awe and wonderment. And then that, that spark, that awe, just kind of, it died over time, right? They, they got so buried in whatever it is they've got to deal with today, you know, mortgage payments, credit card payments, you know, how are you gonna get to work today, all that fun jazz. And, and they, they just stopped caring about space. Yuri's Night is a great way to get people excited about space again. Bring them back in and say, you know what? This is the future of humanity. This is important. We have to explore. It's in our DNA. And we don't have to be old school about it. We can have fun. We can enjoy ourselves. That's, that's Yuri's Night. So um, one other thing that will get people excited is anytime you throw humans into space, we've got the space shuttle. It's retiring. Mm -hmm. And we're giving away a Roku box every show. Uh, this is a little HD player. You hook it up to your HD TV, and at the end of this show, we'll be giving this bad boy away. Uh, so make sure you're watching live, and you'll grab one of these. But um, we've got STS-133. Did I say 134 a second ago? STS-133 coming up. Either on the banner when you watch it is saying uh, February 24th, but it could be the 25th, and that's because of the ATV launch. Uh, there's, a, right. there's a problem with them being able to dock. We're waiting for official announcement later on Friday uh, from NASA to say whether it's going to go on the 24th or the 25th, and we'll update our calendars with that. Uh, but right here, Perforce Software, they're the ones who have given us the equipment necessary to stream STS-133, the final flight ever of Space Shuttle Discovery. There will be no future flights of this shuttle 
ever after this launch. And uh, we'll be bringing it to you online in high definition quality. Get a group of people around your TV. This is just like Yuri's Night, it's just like the Google Lunar X Prize. Gather people around your TV. Go to the Stra Space Travelers Emporium, get around that HD TV, plug in your Roku box, go to the live streaming channel of Space Vidcast and watch that launch. Better yet, don't even watch it on Space Vidcast. What, what, what? Go there in person. Find a way to make it down to one of these final three launches because there is nothing like viewing and experiencing a launch in person. And uh, I think you will attest, I mean, you, you, the first launch you saw was after doing Space Vidcast. Yes. So how would, you, how would you compare the difference between watching it live on the TV versus watching it live in person. Well, the one nice thing about watching it on the TV, if I may, for just a moment, sure. is that you get those really cool camera angles. You get that really close-up shot, and you get this shot, that shot, this shot, that shot. But you can always go back and watch that later. Yeah, no, absolutely. But it, you know, so that's kind of a cool thing. Mm -hmm. The major difference about watching it in person, particularly because a lot of times when we're doing Space Vacast and we're covering it, it's just you and I in the studio, maybe sure. with Adam, and uh, and the camera itself, Adam's right Adam, there. Adam, the other Adam. There we go. Um, <laughs> but it's it's just us, and while it's it's fun to you know be with us, when you're there in person and you're surrounded by all these other people who are just as excited and, and just as interested as you, it's 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 like a group movement. Like I, I I don't even know how else to explain it. It's sort of one of those things that people say, you know, they go on a, a three day walk for cancer or they, you know, million man march or something like that. It, it's that group experience that you just, you can't get anywhere else. Absolutely. And if, if you can't go in person, recreate that group experience, mm -hmm. right? I mean, get people, get pull them over. It's, uh, I think it's like 5 p a little after 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, that STS-133 is scheduled to launch. Right. So um, it's kind of in the evening. It's, it's close enough where you can get people around the TV. After school? After school, absolutely. Create little parties around this. Get Don't just watch it alone. You know, it's a social event. I mean, Be watch social. it alone. You know, I mean, watch, watch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, bring somebody else in. And the the great thing is that you don't even really have to be a space geek to really think that big puffs of smoke and fire is cool because everybody likes that stuff. You know, uh, I mentioned that ATV got in the way. Uh, we actually have launch coverage of ATV2. Uh, this is what is causing a bit of a problem with the launch date. Um, when ATV2 is up there, it'll be docking to the International Space Station and uh, they're, they don't want to, they just, long story short, they don't want to dock both of them at the same time, essentially. Right. So um, here's a launch co coverage of ATV-2. Check it out, we'll bail from it early, but here are the basics. Atus de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité. À l'image Vulcain. Confirmé. Top à l'image EAP. Décollage. Les armes à bord sont normes. At this point, it's all animations from Beautiful, here forward. Yeah, so we, we can, we can, we, yeah, it was a night launch, so that's about as much as you get. So you can bail from the launch of the, from from here. Uh, but yeah, that was uh, um, that was Arion Space. I, you know, they always do a really good job. Oh yeah, I love night launches. Um, so there you go. Uh, that uh, ATV two heading up to the International Space Station, mm -hmm. STS one thirty three heading up to the International Space Station. Flipping the news around a little bit here, we have got a large solar flare that will be hitting the planet in about thirty minutes from the live show. So it's probably already hit if you're watching this on demand. Hence, all those people who keep saying, "I don't know, there's some be some sort of issue." Ustream is all crazy going. It's nuts. the solar flare. Blame it on the flare. Blame it on the solar flare. <laughs> Um, check this out. We've got video from SDO. Watch, um, what, here's what you're looking for. W um, it's kind of a subtle detail, but watch this kind of big boosh comes out of the sun. Here you go, watch this. This is really cool. Here it comes. Yo! <laughs> It is subtle, but yeah. You <laughs> yeah, see I, hope, I hope that shows up in the stream just because boosh. it just 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. So that's a, uh, that there was you a- go. Just for Aaliyah. Uh, class X 2.2. It's the largest solar flare in four years to hit Earth. And it's going to hit around 3 a.m. coordinated universal time, which is about uh, 32 minutes from right now, depending. And uh, the sun is getting, the sun kind of goes through cycles. It ebbs yeah. and flows, larger activity, lower activity. We're starting to get into a larger activity uh, portion of the sun and it's supposed to max out a lot of people say 2012 but I believe the uh, actual number is 2013 yeah. is when the solar max is supposed to occur so that was just really cool looking video that I thought everyone would kind of enjoy <laughs> um, and uh, let's do a do I want to talk about that one because you know I don't want to I don't want to bash him well right we're gonna skip that and yeah. see if we can't not, you know what? Let's talk about Lego for a moment. Oh, Lego? Yep. Okay. You know this story? No. Well, I mean, only kind of. I think I haven't had a chance to really so look every, over it. So every, oh, hang on. Uh, offset but we, for a we've second. Got, we've got Legos. Ooh, I don't know how to do we this. We have space Legos. So you Lego can do it. is, I believe in you. well, you're going to need to talk about it if I'm going to do this. Um, okay. Uh, do, 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 do. So uh, Lego, uh, Lego has had an interesting relationship with uh, space in general since about, I think it was 1964. And uh, they have decided, as of late, to come out with some more space-themed Lego sets, which is really, really exciting because, you know, we're a bunch of nerds and we're <laughs> we like Legos. Who doesn't really like Legos? Oh, boy, that really is gigantic, isn't it? It's really hard to move, actually, without making Twist. a break. So, uh, anyway, so the Lego uh, shuttle model, space shuttle model, um, which should be hitting shelves in March for about $30, is smaller than the one, uh, it's of course not that one in that picture, and it's also not the one that we have here. No, there are here. four sets. Right, but there's this one in particular that I was talking about. Then there's also the... The one um, that's showing right here, that one's coming in uh, August. Right. Trying to find dates on all of these different things, sorry. A Vax Headroom tells me to epoxy this together. That defeats the point, though. No, you gotta, you gotta be careful with your ben Lego. Ben likes kinda, just I, I like having it when it and having break to put apart from time again. to time. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of no, fun. It, it's one of his pastimes, really. <laughs> oh, we did a space pot on the on the Lego. I probably mentioned this in the live show before, and I I held it up and it just went <laughs> and crashed. But there's also a moon buggy that's going to be five dollars. There's the satellite launch pad set uh, for twenty dollars, um, and then the big bad set. Uh, which is including the space center is going to be sixty nine ninety nine, so seventy dollars, which are all uh, less expensive than this one, which is nice because then it makes it more available to more people. Um, you know, if you don't have the money to buy the seventy dollar set or the hundred dollar set, you can buy the cute little moon buggy set and feel like you know you've got a little piece of it, which I think is interesting. There's also the aliens set. But we all like Legos. Really this was one of the main too. giveaways of Space Up. Uh, space up. Um, before we go, um, you want to talk about, we each went to a different Space Up. So I went to Space Up Houston. Mm -hmm. You went to Space Up San Diego. Mm -hmm. Did you want to talk about your Space Up a little bit and kind of some of the stuff that happened there? Um, yeah. So uh, Space Up San Diego, which was a smashing success, if I smashing. do say so myself. Um, hopefully you guys got a chance to see some of it, and if you haven't, um, most of it is archived right now on Ustream. I am working on trying to get that out to YouTube for you guys, uh, but we had, yes? Well, I was going to say, if you go to the wiki, yes. uh, so let me go back to the main page on the wiki. We had three pods, uh, pod one being our main pod. Uh, we actually were on, uh, let's see, it's the... University of California, San Diego, UCSD campus. Uh, our pod one was in the loft, so if you're familiar with the campus at all, which is really cool because there was like a whole barn. It just was really gorgeous, and they set up a stage for us and what have you. Uh, pod two was upstairs from there, slightly smaller pod, and then pod three was upstairs from there, a little bit bigger pod, but uh, we always had something interesting going on in all of the different pods. There were a number of times when I heard a number of people say, I don't know which one to go to, and because they were like 40 you know, steps mm -hmm. in between each one, and you really had to commit. <laughs> there wasn't sort of like just walking into one and then walking out of it and going up to the next one because you'd be breaking a sweat by the time you did that. Uh, but it was it was really cool. It was really great to see a lot of familiar faces. Um, I had a ton of help. All of my pod masters that were there, thank you so much. Um, any guy, anyone who was in the chat room and uh, interacting with my pod masters, they were awesome and most of them were volunteers uh, from people who were at the planetary there's a there was a planetary group uh, from the college itself and so there were volunteers from there so a lot of students getting involved it was very cool we had a bunch of Legos uh, did some moonbots competition stuff 
It was, yeah, it was, it was a ton of fun. I had a bunch of people from SpaceX there. x -Core was there. Uh, Orbital Outfitters was there. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a whole bunch of people, but it was, it was really exciting, a lot of fun, um, very down to earth, and, and a lot of really great ideas came coming out of there. And so you mentioned the wiki, or I mentioned, someone mentioned the wiki. You did. If you go to the Space Vidcast wiki, we actually have a Space Up 2011 page, and when you go in there, you can see the grid. This is the archived grid of everything that happens. Uh, or happened, and anything that's in red, um, that's something that needs a little bit of help. So a lot of the Space Up San Diego videos from Ustream need to be added into these sections. Additionally, if you gave a session and you want to add more information in there as to what that session was about, who was in the room, who was speaking, maybe some pictures that you took of the session, hit our wiki, go into it, and feel free to you know fill in more information about this. But check this out. Most of these, they have the video archive of the session. So even if you weren't able to attend, you know, here's a Space Up Houston session, you weren't able to make it, boom, you can go right in here, hit the YouTube link, and watch this 57 minute long YouTube video and uh, most of them came out pretty good actually I think we're we're getting better at those yeah. a total of seven pods uh, streaming live from two different locations across the US it was uh, it was it was a technical feat sanity which is exactly <laughs> why I'm so sick I was so busy uh, particularly on the first day I didn't even have time to eat um, but thank you to everyone from the loft and uh, Chris Radcliffe especially uh, for making sure I did eat uh, at some point and especially the next day in any case, uh, but yeah, no, we had a really, really fabulous time. Fabulous. Um, and uh, I, I felt kind of very conflicted about, you know, not only were we separated because of, of the two different cities, um, but I, I felt sort of bad that we, we couldn't rep be represented at each one mm -hmm. fully. Yep. Um, but I, I think it, it still went off very, very well. I think Houston was a lot of fun as well. A, a lot of what you mentioned, you had you had the board. The difference was, of course, in Houston, the rooms were right next to each other. So if you didn't like what you were in, yeah. you just get up and leave and Cheater. walk to another room. Yeah, it was pretty awesome, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, check out the Flickr pictures uh, of the 501, the, the 501st right? uh, stormtroopers showing up. Uh, and we've got some pretty cool uh, Darth Vader video. And we just had a lot of fun, right? Because Space Up, it's not just about, you know, ah, we're a conference where space got to be serious. It's about uh, op having communication and, and thinking about these things and starting conversations and having fun, right? Because space is fun. It doesn't have to be as boring as you're probably used to it being. I think one of the funniest things was uh, we had so many people with so many different ideas that not only were we combining certain pods of, oh yeah, I was going to talk about this too. Cool, we can just do this together. But at some point, and I, I'll upload the picture to Flickr as soon as I get a chance, there was a post-it note kind of off to the side on one of our things. And I was like, what is that? And and they said, I forget exactly what the topic was, but it was like, new, more new space conversation out the door. Like, <laughs> our people were making our own pods. Like, they, there wasn't enough room to contain everything that we were doing. And we had a moon pie contest. Ooh, we didn't. And uh -huh. MEC, mm, not, not in Houston. Oh, 501 moon pie. Five, I don't know. I don't know. It's ah, a tough call. Know, that is a tough call, actually. <laughs> All right, on that note, before we end the show, let's uh, let's head on back. Do we still have uh, William Pomerantz on the line? DJ are Dr. P? Are you left? Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm done with these guys. <laughs> uh, DJ Dr. P, are you still out there? Oh, I'm still here, but Amanda, whoo, you scared her off. <laughs> we're, Understandable. We're, we're good at that. We're scary that way. Uh, so uh, you're currently working for the XPRIZE Foundation, but um, uh, you've got a second announcement, uh, uh, smaller than the GLXP announcement, but you've got a second announcement to make. Yeah, uh, this one is is both really exciting and really super sad. After almost six years, uh, time has come for me to move on and, and leave this marvelous post here at XPRIZE. Um, it has been an absolutely a wild ride, but uh, but an amazing one. I have worked at a place where I've been inspired every single day, and I don't know how you could possibly beat that. I get to meet fantastic people, and I get to work with fantastic people, and it's been... Uh, it's been really tremendous, but I got an opportunity to go over to, uh, to Virgin Galactic, uh, where I'm going to be starting next week as a new vice president for special projects there. And that was just an offer I couldn't turn down. Um, it's a great chance to build on the legacy of the Ansari X Prize and kind of do a similar thing just from uh, from the other side of the table. So I'm really, really excited about that. Well, uh, Virgin Companies is lucky to have you as much. We like to jostle and have fun, but it, it's been great having you on the show. And I hope you'll be no stranger to Space Vidcast now that you're all fancy with Virgin Galactic and whatnot. Uh, not that not that X Prize Foundation isn't fancy, but you know now you're all hoity-toity. <laughs> uh, so hope you'll be no stranger to the show. Are we allowed to talk about that other thing? Uh, yeah. Um, I, well, quickly, really quickly, there was a question in the in the room of what does special projects actually entail. 
Ooh, that is a great, great question. question. I've been asking the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of everything. Um, uh, I think my job probably won't be, you know, doing direct sales to customers, which is good because I don't think I would enjoy that or be terribly good at it. I think it'll be looking at, you know, sales maybe to government clients. It'll be looking at technology strategy, all, all kinds of different things. So uh, it is a little bit of a of a, of a hodgepodge, which is exactly what I wanted. I want to have my uh, have my chance to play in all those different cool environments that that version works in. Be getting Richard Branson coffee in the morning. Right. Uh, janitorial work as needed. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, and how many of us would take that job anyhow? Oh, I would. In a heartbeat. Right. Um, so uh, you're familiar with Space Kate a little bit. Uh, you met her at yeah. the aisle. Yep. Uh, so Space Kate, I don't know if you've heard her crazy idea. That just might work. But she's getting closer and closer to it every day. Uh, she has this theory that eventually she will get in front of Richard Branson and she will be able to sit him down and convince him that if she just gets like a three month block of time to get everyone in the world, everyone, to donate their Virgin Atlantic miles to her, which right now this is something you can't do, uh, so that she could buy a Virgin Galactic ticket. So if you wouldn't mind just, you know, sort of dropping that, you know, by we're, Richard. We're using our Hi, influence are you? live on the show Kate. to see what you can do to help Space Kate not get a free ride. That's not that's not what we're going after here. No. Sure. But uh, change the rules slightly so that she can move other people's points so that she can go to space. We're, we're trying to be a catalyst Talk for change a right here in space. Coup. Oh yeah, absolutely. Put him right on the spot. <laughs> Hasn't even left his current post. We're already like, get people flights on those on those space planes. Well, I, I have met Kate. She, she's wonderful, uh, and she's a great storyteller. I have no, do no doubt she could do a great job. So I don't know if I can promise anything just yet since, you know, I haven't started or anything. Uh, but, but Kate's awesome, and uh, that would be cool to make that happen. For yep. sure. And so you have to make sure you bring the moon pies to Virgin. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's your second task. I would like to see Richard Branson in a moon pie eating contest, and I want him timed. I want to know how he stacks up against our uh, MEC champions. <laughs> That would be epic video. That's it. Will's like, oh, uh, internet connection. Sorry. Oh, uh, we feel. <laughs> you, I can't hear you. <laughs> All right, Will. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, everyone watching live. Um, next week's show. Mm, we're gonna try. We might have a launch for crying out loud, people. Exactly. So. When we're not here and we put all of this into launch mode, which is different than live show mode, it's a little bit more difficult for us to do the show. We did last time. Yes. And it was painful and it was difficult, but it was <laughs> fun. Uh, so we're going to try, yes. but we give you no guarantees. It completely depends on how the technology is behaving that day uh, and how much sleep we've had. How the solar flares are. <laughs> exactly. Did the solar flare knock out our transmitters? Right. If not, then we'll probably be live. Uh, regardless, it's looking very positive for a launch of Space Shuttle Discovery sometime next week, either on the 24th or 25th. We are going down there to cover that launch live. And uh, thank you, thank you, Thank you, Perforce Software, for making Huge. this available to everyone in high definition online. It's not just the HD streaming that makes it cool. No. We're down there. We're going to be bringing in PAO. We're going to be bringing in astronauts. We're going to be bringing in people that you can ask your questions of live on the air. So in, you can be watching in HD and then via our chat room say, hey, I'm, I'm curious how this works. And we'll find someone that can not only answer that, but hopefully someone that works on whatever it is you're asking a question about. Just do not ask me what this is or why it's orange. The I'm external just gonna skip, tank? I'm going to skip right over it. <laughs> No, no, we'll answer the basics too. So on that note, I'd like to thank everyone so much for watching and we'll see you at the launch of Space Shuttle Discovery or at least the next scrub attempt of Space Shuttle Discovery. <laughs>
Scroll back up. I'll have to scroll back to the beginning of the show. No, no, no. After we ended the show, who was the first pen person to mention the Roku? All right, hold on. Do, 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 do. I want I think it's to Jim. say Jim Nobles. Jim, congratulations. You have won this Roku because you reminded me that I needed to give this away. There you go. That's how that works. All right. See you for that launch scrub So, uh, Jim, email me your address, uh, Carrie Ann at spacefakecast.com. Blah, blah, blah. We'll take care of it in post-show. We'll, we'll see you guys in the, in the uh, next, next scrub attempt. Oh, roll the clothes thing again. It's that cool. Yeah. Here it comes. Awkward pause. <laughs> and here it is. Go ahead and stop the record, restart. That's right. Hi, everyone. I know it's a black screen, but we'll be back in a moment. Uh, Jim said to regift, so we'll regift, but here's the way the regifting rules work.